my dear friends i welcome you all to my daily dose so i am myself dr rajesh guba i am a cardiologist and i am also the mentor for teaching general medicine for exams like neat pg aims pgi and as well as jipma so as a part of today's daily dose so here is the clinical question so you have been asked to interpret an abg of a 76 year old patient and he got admitted in the emergency department with acute onset of breathlessness and oxygen saturation has been checked it is low oxygen saturation and abg has been done on room air and it is being read as follows the ph is 7.37 and oxygen is 7.8 kilo pascals carbon dioxide is 4.1 kilo pascals bicarbonate is 24 saturation is around 89% what choose the most likely clinical interpretation from these abg result the options are compensated respiratory acidosis type 1 respiratory failure compensated respiratory alkalosis type 2 respiratory failure none of the above now so you should understand some of the basic terminologies first like you should know what is a normal ph normal partial pressure of oxygen normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide right and what is the normal bicarbonate levels so first let me tell you the answer and then i'll discuss all the options here the answer to this particular question here is the type 1 respiratory failure so why is this option is the answer why not the other options are not the answers let me discuss so first of all you should know what is the normal ph if you take the normal ph normal ph is 7.36 to 7.44 is the normal ph and if you take the normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 36 to 44 millimeters of mercury right but if the same thing is asked in your kilo pascals when do we call it as hypercapnia we call hypercapnia if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more than 6.5 kilo pascals but what is our patient having our patient is having the par partial pressure of the carbon dioxide of 4.1 that means the carbon dioxide is within the normal limit right then you take the normal bicarbonate levels the normal bicarbonate levels are 22 to 26 milli equivalents per liter right 22 to 26 milli equivalents per liter this is the normal bicarbonate levels now what is the bicarbonate level of this particular patient that is around 24 that means it is normal so and you take the partial pressure of the oxygen partial pressure of the oxygen in this individual is 7.8 and if the partial pressure of oxygen is less than 8 kilo pascals we call that it as hypoxia right we call it as hypoxia so now what does the patient have now the patient is having only hypoxia what about the carbon dioxide normal what about the bicarbonate normal what about the ph of the patient normal because the ph of our patient is 7.37 and what should be the normal ph that is 7.36 to 7.44 so now after interpreting the abg what does our patient have now our patient has just only hypoxia so this is what is suggest you of your type 1 respiratory failure whereas if you take type 2 respiratory failure right we have type 2 respiratory failure also as one of the option so in case of type 2 respiratory failure like what is that you should have is hypoxia and as well as hypercapnia right hypoxia and as well as hypercapnia that is what is the criteria for type 2 respiratory failure so hypercapnia is not there in the individual so your type 2 respiratory failure is ruled out then what about the other options compensated respiratory acidosis and compensated respiratory alkalosis first of all let me discuss now the bicarbonate levels in our body will decide the metabolic parameters right will decide the metabolic parameters that means what like for suppose if the bicarbonate levels are reduced that will result in what is called metabolic acidosis all right and because like why because bicarbonate is an alkaline substance 
If alkaline substance is reduced, the individual will end up in what is called acidosis. Whereas, if suppose if the bicarbonate levels are elevated, if the bicarbonate levels are elevated, that will result in what is called metabolic alkalosis. Right? That will result in what is called metabolic alkalosis. Okay. So that is your criteria for metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. Then it is your partial pressure of carbon dioxide which will decide the respiratory parameter. Like for example, if the carbon dioxide levels are elevated, that will result in what is called respiratory acidosis. Why? Because carbon dioxide will combine with water molecule will result in what is called carbonic acid and that will result in what is called acidosis. Whereas, if the carbon dioxide levels are reduced, right, if the carbon dioxide levels are reduced, that will result in what is called respiratory alkalosis. Right, that will result in what is called respiratory alkalosis. Okay, so this is a criteria for respiratory acidosis, alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. Now, always remember for suppose if the patient is having respiratory acidosis, the compensatory one will be metabolic alkalosis. For suppose if the individual is having respiratory alkalosis then what will be the compensatory? The compensatory is metabolic acidosis. Right? Compensatory is metabolic acidosis. And the same thing is your vice versa. Like for example, if the individual has metabolic alkalosis, there will be compensated respiratory acidosis. If the individual has metabolic acidosis, there will be compensatory respiratory alkalosis. But in you, if you see in our patient, our patient has absolutely normal ABG. There is no acidosis, there is no alkalosis. So that is the reason why there is no compensatory respiratory acidosis. There is no compensatory respiratory alkalosis as well. Right? So your option A and option C is ruled out. Now, coming to your, so what is the answer here? The answer is type 1 respiratory failure. Now, in which clinical conditions you will see the development of type 1 respiratory failure? So, type 1 respiratory failure will occur whenever there is ventilation perfusion mismatch. And where will you have very important cause like ARDS? The other important etiologies like pulmonary edema, pneumonia, pulmonary embolism in initial stages of asthma and as well as emphysema. Right? So these are the conditions where you have type 1. Whereas you take type 2 respiratory failure. What did I tell you? Simple concept. Hypoxia and hypercapnia. That is your type 2 respiratory failure. Type 2 respiratory failure will occur mainly because of hypoventilation. See, type 1 respiratory failure is because of your ventilation perfusion mismatch. Whereas here, it is due to hypoventilation. Why? Because whenever there is hypoventilation, there will be building up of your carbon dioxide. So whenever there is building up of the carbon dioxide, that will result in what is called respiratory acidosis. So that is what you need to remember. Okay. Now, in which clinical conditions, you will have type 2 respiratory failure. Like in severe conditions or severe stages of your pneumonia, COPD, asthma and obstructive sleep apnea. Just now you see pneumonia, emphysema that is your COPD and asthma we have discussed for type 1 respiratory failure. But in early stages definitely yes they will cause a type 1 respiratory failure. But as the CVRP increases that will result in what is called type 2 respiratory failure. And the other important causes are the drugs which will suppress the respiratory system like mainly you take opioids. It will suppress the respiratory center. So respiratory drive is lost. So when the respiratory drive is lost, so the individual will land up in the hypercapnia resulting in type 2 respiratory failure. And the other thing is in case of cervical cord lesions. See, cervical cord lesions, you take the root value of your C3 to C5. C3 to C5 is the root value of the phrenic nerve. Phrenic nerve is the one which will supply to the diaphragm. So if there is any cervical cord lesion, that will result in the phrenic nerve damage, that will result in the diaphragmatic palsy and that will result in the hypercapnia and that will make the individual to land up in type 2 respiratory failure. Next, you take myasthenia gravis, glen barry syndrome. In myasthenia gravis and as well as glen barry syndrome, they are the disorders which will affect the skeletal muscles which are present within the chest wall. 
and that will make the individual's respiration completely impaired and that will result in building up of your carbon dioxide and that will cause the type 2 respiratory failure. And even your thoracic wall diseases like flail chest and as well as kyphoscoliosis are also the one which are responsible for the development of your type 2 respiratory failure. Right? So going back to the question now, what is the answer? The answer is type 1 respiratory failure. So this is a short video of how to analyze the arterial blood gas analysis, type 1 and type 2 respiratory failure. I hope you might have liked this particular short video. So please follow us on the daily dose for the daily updates.